Hello everybody and welcome to part two of the tutorial. Um, in part one we learned how to make a paddle and right now if I run my program I have a paddle that's going back and forth at the bottom of the screen. It's great. What I want to do now is I want to put a ball on the screen. So I'm going to go up here to actor and I'm going to right click and I'm going to press new subclass and I'm going to make a class called ball. Now for the paddle, we actually had to kind of import our own image. But for the ball, we can go and look down here and we see that there are lots of different options. For me, I'm going to pick this one right here. And also what's important to note is that I can change the image anytime I want. So I'll start with this image and if I decide that I'm going to be in a different one at some point, I can always change it later. But for now, if I click OK over here, you notice that there's now a ball class and if I held down shift I can put as many of these on the screen as I want. Now obviously that's not how I want it to behave but that's the idea. So I'm going to reset and now I'm going to go into my world and I want to make it so that a ball appears on the screen the same way a paddle does. So I can copy that line and paste it right here and change the word paddle to ball. So now when the world gets constructed, the first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna make the stage a certain of 600 pixels by 400. Then it's gonna add a paddle at 300 pixels to the right and 350 pixels down. And now let's put the ball, let's put it at say, I don't know, let's go 200 and uh, 300. So now we have a paddle and we have a ball. Great. And we might want to alter where the ball is later or you know change. We can change anything we want anytime we want so let's not worry about where it is. Let's just uh, make this ball move. So with the paddle we have movement but we have what's called conditional movement. Only if someone presses the left button is this code actually going to get executed. So in other words, we're only going to move left if someone presses the left key. This code right here is responsible for movement. And in the case of the ball, I'm going to copy and paste that code right there. Now this code here will make something move to the left because that's a negative five. So if I run the code right now, you can see the ball moves to the left. Now, I want the ball to move diagonally. And so the way I can have it move diagonally is I want to decrease the x coordinate, but at the same time, let's do the same thing to the y coordinate. So if I change the x and the y at the same time, I get diagonal movement. Okay? So the ball is going to move diagonally around the screen. What we want now is for the ball to hit the wall and then essentially bounce. So I want to make it so that if the ball goes over here, it's going to bounce. Now let's think of what a bounce is. Right now the, the X coordinate, and I can hit this act button here to do it kind of frame by frame, if you will, that X coordinate is decreasing by five every time. At this point, right about there, I want the ball to go the other way. So in other words, I want to change from going negative five to going positive five. So that's the concept, and that's what we're going to do here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take out this big comment, because I don't really need it there, and I'm going to put in what we call some variables. So I'm going to make a variable called int x move val, and I'm going to make that equal 5. And I'm going to make int y move val, and I'm going to make that equal to 5 as well. And here, where I'm moving, instead of putting a 5 in the code, I'm actually going to replace this 5 that is responsible for the x movement with the variable here. And I'm going to replace the 
5 here, which is responsible for the y movement, with that. Now let's just talk about this for one second. This is new. Variables are essentially just like they are in mathematics, where you have x and y and you can change their values. So this is a placeholder, and right now I'm assigning this variable's value to be 5. And the same thing with this one. This is an integer variable. It cannot be a decimal, and so I've declared it to be an integer. And the reason I've put it here in this space is because this is a special area where I can declare variables that are not, it's not part of the actual act method itself. So I put these up here on purpose, and I assign their value here. Okay? If I run my code, because, you know, before I had a 5 here and a 5 here, but both of these variables are actually 5 anyway, it's the exact same thing. I get the exact same behavior. But what I want is to make it so that if this ball hits this side, then we're going to go the other way. So how do we do that? Well, we do it based on the x-coordinate. I'm going to say if we get the x-coordinate of the ball, and it turns out that that's, say, below 5. That's really close to the edge of the screen. So if the x-coordinate is below 5, then what we're going to do is we're going to make the ball go the other way. How do we do that? We change the sign of x move val. Now how do I do that? It's a little trick. What we're going to do is we're going to say x move val equals x move val times negative 1. And if you think about that, we're going to take the current x move val, which is 5, multiply it by negative 1, which is negative 5. So negative 5 is going to replace the value of the variable, and now x move val becomes negative 5. So let's see if it worked. Ah, you saw the little bounce there. So yes, it did work. That's fantastic. Now, our next step is going to be to see if we can make it bounce off of the top as well. So, we're going to follow a very similar pattern. The same thing we did here is what we're going to do, but it's now going to be for the y. So I'm going to say if the y value, so if the y variable of the ball gets too low, don't forget, when we're going up the screen, the y variable is actually decrease, or the y, sorry, the y value is actually decreasing. So right now this ball's y coordinate is 350. As it goes up the screen, it's getting smaller and smaller. So when it gets too low, we're going to change it. So all we really need to do is change those two things. And now, we should see a double bounce. And there it is, we see the double bounce. Now, we're almost there. The only thing left is that we want the ball to be able to bounce off of this wall as well. So, a lot of people would say, well, we can copy this and paste it, and then just examine this part here. So if the x-coordinate, say, gets too big, and we think about how big is our, is our stage, well, it's 600 pixels. So if we make it really close, like 595, that will work. However, we can actually do it a little bit simpler than this. Notice that in this case, we're, we're changing the x-move val, but also in this case, we're changing the x-move val. So I'm going to show you how to do two things at once. I'm going to put two AND signs. Actually, I lied. Sorry. I'm going to put two OR signs like this. And they're two vertical bars, which is not a very common character you type on your keyboard. But what this line of code says is if the x-coordinate is less than 5 OR the x-coordinate is greater than 595, in either one of those cases, we want to switch the sign of x move val. So if x move val was 5, it's going to become negative 5. If it was negative 5, it's going to become 5, and it's going to keep switching back and forth. 
So if we run this code, I don't know if we're actually going to hit this side. I may have to move this ball down to start, which I can do. And now let's run it. Bounce, bounce. And you can see it did bounce off this side. Now we're getting some weird behavior at the bottom because we haven't done the bottom yet. And in Brick Breaker, we don't want the ball to bounce off the bottom. But just for the purposes of this, this example here, let's put that in because it's not very hard. I'm going to put in get y. And if the y coordinate, say, gets bigger than 395, now the ball should bounce all around the screen. So I should see a ball that just bounces forever and ever and ever, which is not a great Brick Breaker game. We're going to have to make that ball fall through the bottom at some point. But now you can see how the ball is just going to bounce off the screen. And all we're doing is we're checking the coordinates. We're checking the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. And we're going to basically flip the value of movement depending on where the ball is. So I hope this helped you understand how to make a ball bounce around the screen. And our next step is going to be making the paddle actually hit the ball.